Any questions? So we are done with the uh, basic static and delay. Now we want to do optimization. Okay. So before I move forward, any question, everything all right? Okay. Okay, so now, how do we optimize the compressed logic? We learn about the inverter, right? This is inverter. We say the delay of each inverter stage is TP0 times one plus C external plus this uh, divided by gamma CG. What is TP0 again? Anyone remember? Forgot? What is TP0? TP0 is the delay of the uh, reference inverter, okay? The smaller size reference inverter, which has the symmetric delay, okay? So it's technology dependence. Once you have a technology, you cannot change this. As a designer, you are responsible to change this, not this. And this one becomes F divided by gamma. What is F again? Do you remember? Anyone? What is F? So it's the C. Um, uh, is the fan out? Fan out. What is fan out? So it's the C, um, CG of the transistor m3 m4 or i mean you know uh, like for the, the second stage yeah plus the um intrinsic uh capacitance fan out is the ratio of the capacitance of the next stage divided by the this stage so very good Right, but however, it's not plus. It don't plus the intrinsic. It's the ratio of this gate of next stage divided by this stage. Is this okay? For example, if I have an inverter driving to inverter, the the capacitance I see if they're identical, fan out equal to two, right? Because I see two capacitance here, and I only have one. I'm the guy pushing two people of the same size as mine. So the fan out is two. Okay. And what is gamma? For every stage, we have an intrinsic capacitance CD. Okay. But we don't want to deal with that. For each technology, uh, gamma is just uh, equal to, uh, what's that? CD divided by CG. We just try to relate the K capacitance to the drain capacitance. So we can simplify as one plus F divided by gamma. Okay, I hope uh, you, you, everyone will memorize this, right? It will be good, right? Uh, don't just uh, look at the cheat sheet, right? Really understand. Okay, so this is the inverter. We are going to use the same framework, but in order to deal with the complex logic, we need to, in, it becomes this equation. You will see why it is like this later. We won't prove it, right? But it has two more quantity. One is P, okay? It is basically talking about the intrinsic delay of a complex gate to a simple inverter. Another is G, we call it the logical effort. Okay, we'll do it one by one. Before moving forward, we need to reference it to the baseline inverter one more time, okay? We, we will say the baseline inverter, which gives you the TP0, has a symmetric delay. That's why you have TP0. And then it is like this. This is the baseline inverter we are going to use. 
right? The size is two here is one. What does it mean by two? It means maybe I use two times of the minimum size. And here I use one times of the minimum size. Okay, so this is the baseline we are going to compare. Right? So when you see two, it means the size is double. One, it means the size is one. Okay, so refer to the sizing before when you do land gate. Now you can just move two or one because we know that this is the minimum size. So what is the meaning of the P value, right? I talk about the intrinsic delay, right? So this is the ratio of intrinsic delay of the gate to the inverter, okay? The inverter has an intrinsic delay. What is that? TP0, right? But now because we have a gate, we actually have a larger, our gate is more complex, we actually have a larger intrinsic delay. What is intrinsic delay? It's either 0 0.69 times the R equivalent times the C intrinsic, correct? That is the meaning of intrinsic delay. Okay, so how do we compare? Very easy. The first step, size it so it has the same R as inverter, right? We can do that, right? So then we have the, with this, we have the same R. Then we compare the drain cap, right? Delay is 0 0.69 R equivalent intrinsic. I size it so they have the same resistance. Then now the difference is the drain cap, right? Because intrinsic capacitance, right? We discuss a lot of time, spend a lot of time on that. I hope you know that it is the drain capacitance, right? CDB1, CDB2, CGD1, CGD2, okay? For example, for LAN gate, let's look at the LAN gate. This is LAN gate, correct? How should I size it so that it has the same resistance as the inverter? I just show you the inverter is one at the bottom and two at the top. How should I size it? How should I size the NMOS? Two times. Two times, very good. And, and since here I say N, so I better say N here. I, I find that I say N. Now, if I have N input, how should I size it? I have N input. How should I size this so it has the same resistance? Just now I have N. Say again. N times. N times. N, 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 right? How about for PMOS? How should I size it? It's like two already. So it's two, two, two. Very good, right? Because we don't need to change it. Worst case is I only have one conducting, right? So what is the total? So I have the same equivalent resistance, right? This is one. And two, I find to drink, right? The cap, you know that now we are trying to, this is the intrinsic, C intrinsic effective. C intrinsic is equal to what? Well, for the NMOS, for the NMOS, right? It is N time wider. So it is N times larger capacitance. For the PMOS, it is not n time wider, but have n more device in parallel. It has also n time larger, right? So the intrinsic capacitance becomes 
CN moles plus CP moles times N. So this is N times of inverter. So the delay is N times slower, slower. That's why the P value equal to N. That's how we get this one, N. Is this okay? How about a two-way multipressor? What does it do, two-way multipressor? It's basically that this is the select, right? When, let me explain a little. When S0 is one, this is on, this is on because this is far, then your data C in will go to C out. When S0 zero is zero, but S1 is one, then this is on, this is on, then this data will go to the C out. This is the multipressor, right? We multipress different data to one single nine, but you have N of them. But, but that is okay, we assume only two waves, so we only have two. Now, can you tell me, how should I size it so it has the same resistance as an inverter? Then we need to look at the worst case scenario, right? Because this is an N-way multipressor, we know that only one of them will turn on at one time. So when we try to charge up this load, we see a serious PMOS. When we try to decharge, de we see a serious NMOS, right? So because of this, I need to size it double time so that I have the same delay as inverter. Is this part okay, everyone? So after I size it in this way, I have the same resistance, step one, same resistance, right? As inverter. Now I need to compare the capacitance to an inverter. Because the PMOS has, if you look at this part, it see the total capacitance, it will be equals to the NMOS, but you size it double, right? So it should be two. However, I have two copy of this. This point is connected to here also. And same for the PMOS. I size it double, right? And I again, I have two, okay? So, so it is four times of inverter. Right. You just recall, you, let's recall here. This is two, this is one, right? So as a result, the P value equals to four. Is this okay? I think uh, I, I reached the, the, the uh, 415, so I won't do more, but let's uh, stop here and let me know if you have any questions. All right, so after all, P value is to compare the intrinsic delay of the MOS and the PMOS. And if you remember how we derive the equation, you probably remember that TPCO times one is the intrinsic delay. That's why we just put P here. So P times TPCO account for the intrinsic delay part. Okay, if you are... Uh, you